people have approached me throughout the years to do something like this. And my point was always, I need a story that I, that's intriguing and that makes sense and that's interesting enough, you know, because I never really, I, I, I want people to come in to see the show. And even if you haven't heard one of these songs, it still has to be a captivating story. You have to be invested in all these characters and feel for the show, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you, if you know some of the songs, great, but, but to me it was always story first. So our aim was to, to make a musical for everyone, essentially, a, a show that encapsulated whoever who you are, uh, you can be proud of what you are, and you can, as long as you can find within you something you want to roar about, then this building, this space, this musical is for you. When you, when you, when you arrive on stage, and people have introduced you as Shakespeare. The stakes, the stakes are pretty high. You know, it's quite. You, you've got a lot to live up to. But I, I always like to say that I think he did most of the hard work for me. So, um, um, thanks, Shakespeare. I, I was just saying, it's the most extraordinary part because most of the time when you play a funny character, you're just the funny character. And then Anne's sort of all different versions of she's, which is what everyone's like which is you're kind of funny and then you're serious and then you're angry and I get to do all these different um, sort of characters in one character obviously she writes herself in the show as another character as Juliet's best friend so I get to be this kind of young silly <laughs> silly sort of pixie on top of the Christmas tree kind of character and and then be someone that's very you know a mother who's had a loss and has a struggling marriage and um, it's such a gift of a role and I, I'm, I'm so grateful to be playing her. I mean, I just, I remember reading the script and thinking, this is brilliant. Like, I would never have thought of this and this is like genius. And then, uh, like the first time I went in and did a workshop, we only did like the first half of the first act and I was like, this feels amazing, it feels great. And everyone was so passionate about the project. And we did a first showing after the two weeks and like Max Martin was there and the producers were there and the vibe was electric. And it was just like, everyone knew that this was something really, really special. I was asked to come in and just read it. So I just read it cold. Um, I thought it was just the most phenomenal thing that I've ever heard in my life. I laughed, I cried things, you know, my there was a stone in my chest from all the, the emotion. Uh, yeah, it was just one of those things. And then all the songs fitting so perfectly as well was just, it was like magic for me. Yeah. It's such a rich script and, a, and, and the, uh, the amount of hit songs that you get to sing and listen to your favorite West End singers sing. I think it's just great. I think what's so great about this is that I'm really, I'm in my late twenties and I know every song because I grew up with the music and he's made such an incredible tapestry of sounds from the Backstreet Boys up until the weekend and then some. So anyone kind of around my age, early 30s, it's a great night out. But then also the young teens, the mums, because they can really, really connect to the nurse and to Anne slash April. Everyone can see themselves in the show. Yeah, I mean, we were really interested in always putting the story first, always the characters, always the story, always the emotion. But at the same time, there's something really interesting about pop music and the way it sort of explodes out, whether it's at a pop concert or a music video. And so that's a, a sort of like even bigger level of emotion. So how we use that um, in terms of storytelling is actually just opening up a lot of new doors that haven't been opened yet in theater.